I've been dreaming of Africa for years. I finally hooked up with Shabalala Safaris. I've got my gun and my bow, and I'm headed to the airport. Next stop, South Africa. To hunt Africa is the holy ground. I've read all the stories, the capstick books, and it's my turn to go hunt Africa. As hunters, we're misunderstood as people that dislike animals. I love animals, and I spend most of my time outdoors with them. I grew up on a ranch, and the life that we lived was simple. It's a life that most people aren't lucky enough to enjoy. Hunting's in my DNA. My ancestors hunted to survive, and what they passed on to me is imperative that I pass along to my family. The harvest of an animal does so much for us as humans. It creates a food source for us while strengthening the population. It is my responsibility to manage nature and help create a better ecosystem. That's just my life as a hunter. Next stop. Finally, I've been waiting to go to Africa my whole entire life. It was a six hour car ride to Houston, Texas to jump on an airplane to fly for 22 hours. Make a little stop in Germany and we're headed to South Africa. And it gave me a lot of time to think of all the animals I wanted to see and how much this is a reality coming true for me. I've always wanted to go here since I was a kid hunting in Nevada. I always heard about hunting Africa and I'm on my way to hunt Africa and I'm so excited to get there and it's just 22 short little hours on an airplane and I'm in South Africa. We land in Johannesburg after a long flight. I'm so excited to see Darren Duffy. He has the Nyate Conservation Corps. He takes groups of students over there and he's the one that lined this up. He said, I've got a family over there that for your first time in Africa you couldn't go with a better bunch of people. The horse for five minutes for now. Oh, okay. Right, we got to Africa and Rick's gonna have to ride in the back. Of course, Jay would put me in the back, back here, in the back of the uh, vehicle traveling on safari. Good fly. Kinda in the situation. <laughs> Little bumpy back here, but not too bad. I have no choice. Cameraman's got to go in the back because I get car sick. I've been dreaming about this place for months since we set it up. And we pull in and we start to see animals everywhere. And it's everything I can imagine in hunting Africa. Thatch roofs, beautiful outbuildings. We saw a baboon running through the field when we pulled up. I mean, this is Africa. We're here. We've made it. Cameraman's a little sick but I feel pretty good. Look at these monkeys. There's monkeys. In there. Yeah. No, you're not. No monkeys. Okay. We get out of the truck and here's the family to meet me. Uh, I've come a long ways and to meet them and see the smile on their face and having me at their, at their ranch, that, that made me feel good and that's what it's all about. You wait that long to go somewhere and you want to be with great people and I couldn't have picked a better place. Jay, nice to meet you finally. We made it. Good. Oh, it's going good. I'm so happy to be here. Here it is. I'm with my PH, professional hunter in Africa. We're going to shoot my rifle. This is really going to happen. Go to the range. Blouser has sent me a new barrel, a 300 Weatherby barrel for my Blouser R8. And I've been shooting it all last season with a 270 barrel. I changed it with one tool, got it sighted back in. I'm shooting the same rifle. It feels the same to me. It has a little more pop to it. I don't know what to expect. I've never hunted Africa. I've read all the books and seen all the stories, but 
It's my turn in the morning. This segment brought to you by Hornaday. Accurate, deadly, dependable. Obex, antimicrobial defense system. Property which we call Shabalala Game Ranch, my father purchased in 1986. At that stage we had another game ranch where we'd already been doing hunting safaris since 1981-82. Uh, prior to that we used to hunt my dad, my, my grandfather on my dad's side was an American so he brought his hunting and fishing tradition. So it's been a tradition for a, a couple of generations in, in, uh, in the Keeney family. Uh, in 1986 we acquired this property which was a uh, a well-established game ranch at that stage. Uh, already had most of the species there are now. Um, and we've run it and managed it ever since. Uh, doing a lot of meat, safari, meat hunting safaris with South Africans, but also doing trophy hunts. Um, we probably got some of the best kudu hunting a person could, could ever dream of. We've, we've harvested quite a few kudu bulls in excess of 60 inches over the years um, and it's a, just a great place to hunt with a lot of different variety in, in habitats, topography, so it's not a monotonous place to hunt. It can get tough sometimes because the bush is a little bit thick um, but I think it is a, a property when you hunt it and you hunt it well you're well satisfied with the results. I can't wait to get in this Land Rover coming to pick me up. This is legit Africa style. We got a big open Land Rover with two good looking Jack Russells, Jet and Obi, and they're the ones that make it all happen. If you shoot, they'll find them for you. And Jet is a legend in South Africa. This dog has found more game and he runs to them, blood trails them, and barks when he finds them. And Obi's kind of the bodyguard. Obi's maybe that tall, but his heart's that big, and when something is trying to get away, Obi makes sure that doesn't happen. Come around the corner, first thing we see is Impala. There's a bunch of them. They're running all over the road. They're running through the brush, and uh, I'm excited. It's fixing to go down right here. This is going to be my first stock on an African animal. We come around, there's kind of like a bottom down there, and this ram they call it's walking down through the brush, and Mike says, there's your ram. Let's try and get a shot on him. different here in Africa. You got to shoot standing up, and you got to shoot off sticks, and you got to be ready because they're only there for just a second. It's a lot different than hunting in, in the States where you kind of get braced up and take your time and shoot your rifle. We're walking through this thick brush and we got Impala bounding around and, and I see this big ram and I know that's the one we're going to take. When I squeezed that blouser off, put it right in his shoulder, that was a great shot, he was down. And uh, I've harvested my first African animal. I've got a beautiful Impala on the ground. My whole hunting career, I've been wanting to come to Africa. And this year, I was fortunate enough to hook up with Shabalala Safaris through Niati Conservation Corps and they're an outfit out of Stephenville there that takes kids over here to Africa. And he's got a friend that has the ultimate hunting place. This is our first morning. We've had a great stock on these Impala. What a great animal to harvest for my first African harvest. I'm, I'm just elated to be here for one, to see all the wildlife this morning. We've seen several different species. And just to ride around out here was worth the trip, worth the 20 hour plane ride. And we're just north, 15 kilometers of Taba Zimbi. Uh, flew into South Africa, Johannesburg, and here we are, making a dream come true for me here in Africa. This 
segment is brought to you by Texas Premier Sporting Arms. Vortex Optics, the force of optics. First Impala down, we get him in the Land Cruiser and we start back across the ranch to go see what else we can find. We don't go 100 yards and we jump a bunch of warthog and that's one of the things I wanted to harvest when I was here. So we get out and the stock is on. Just to be spotting and stalking a warthog in Africa, they got tusks that long. They'll tear your leg off, I think, I don't know. The hogs in Texas, they got tusks that long, they'll hurt you. So we're walking through the brush, we get them hemmed up, and uh, we're looking for a big boar. some sows and some little ones and we come around the corner and they step out and you couldn't have scripted it better. I got braced up on this tree. That got blown up by the, by the bullet hitting. My South African name is Dust Blows A Lot. This is the first morning of day one, and I've got two animals down. Have you ever had one of those dreams where it gets better and better? We just got my Impala loaded. We're driving back to the camp. We're going to take a little lunch break. And I have my first warthog down. We made a little stock on him. There was a group there together, and Mike pointed out this boar. He's got beautiful tusks. You can tell he's old. They're, they're worn off the end here from using them quite a bit. I'd sure hate for one of those to get a hold of me. It was just cool. I mean, it's everything that you can imagine here in South Africa. Here at Shabala Safaris, I am staying forever. And I've got my first warthog and an Impala in the Land Cruiser, and we haven't been hunting for 45 minutes. This segment is brought to you by Texas Premier Sporting Arms. Newmont Mining Corporation, demonstrating leadership and safety and stewardship of the environment. Taco Casa, real fresh, real food, real good. If you've got an extended period to hunt, you can hunt in so many different ways. Um, and if you've got the time, there's nothing better than, and you fit enough, there's nothing better than sneaking through the bush and being quiet and hearing the birds and hearing your own heartbeat sometimes and being surprised around the next bend what there is. It's a total different hunt than, than driving around and, and spotting something and then stalking it. But we did quite a lot of that. We, I think we had a good few of our animals that we, we walked onto, uh, saw them, crept a little bit closer and, and, and shot them. And I think those are the most satisfying hunts you're going to have. Hey, Taco Casa. Yeah. <laughs> we head to Mike's cousin's place that's about, oh, it's about 45 minutes from his place. And it's totally different than we've seen. A lot of grasslands and savanna stuff that you can imagine. We pull in, and there's giraffe running this way, and there's cooter running that way. 
and it's going to be an awesome, awesome evening. And I've got a list of animals that I want to harvest, but there's a lot of animals over there that are just amazing and Mike has access to. And we come around this corner and here's this bush buck. And I never really thought about shooting a bush buck. When I saw him, I wanted him. And that's Africa. Stuff happens so quick. This Africa hunting is so awesome. I've had a blast. We saw a warthog on the way in that must have had 12 inch cutters on him. He was impressive. And uh, Shabalala has just got so many different things to do, different species to hunt, and we're only in day three, and we're just getting started. I feel so blessed to be in Africa. It's been an awesome trip. I'm talking kind of funny, because I've been going a little too fast. There's way too many things to do over here, and I'm having a good time. We're out in this real grassy area, and these reed buck, they like to hang in there. They kind of remind me a lot of a mule deer, the way they act. They look a lot different than a mule deer, but they're, they're kind of like a brown shaggy with horns that come straight over and sweep. And we'd been seeing some really, really nice ones. And they really were looking to harvest some of the older, more mature on their way out, on the decline out of here. And that's what we we're looking for. We we're looking for an old ram, get him out of the herd. And we come across this flat and these things bark and run and they take off running and we're walking through the grass and I'm trying to get on the sticks. And I don't know if I'm gonna have an opportunity to shoot one of these. It's almost dark, and we'd found a leopard kill in this area just just that day. And the best thing for us to do, instead of run after him in the brush, is to wait for the dogs to get there. And here comes Jet Novi to the rescue. And they've been wanting to take out some of these old reed bucks, which are a beautiful species. I really hadn't seen these before. And Mike said that, that not a lot of places you can get them over here. He said to take him. BH knew what to do. When got Obi and Jet, they're the famous track dogs at Shabalala Safaris. And it didn't take us long. We got a little help and we were right on him. And uh, we got him. And I'm glad we did. This bush out here, that's that's pretty, pretty exciting to be walking through where a leopard just ate a water buck the other day right over here. So this is the real African experience. <laughs> come around the corner and there's a drag mark that I would never have saw right through the middle of the road. And Mike decides, let's get off and see where this goes. So we start tracking something that's dragging a dead animal that is killed. That just shows you the kind of predator that these leopards are. It's killed some kind of plains game that's dragging it through the brush. And the Yate Conservation Corps is here doing a study on leopard population. Saw some leopard tracks. It had a little dinner off of Shabalala is farm. Looks like it got one of their animals and we're just trying to see if we could find the kill. But pretty big drag marks. So it must have been a pretty good sized animal that it caught. Pretty cool. That makes you know that you're in Africa when you see a big cat dragging an animal and the drag marks that wide. So I don't know why I went in there without a rifle, but I think I can outrun Mike. And we get on this trail and we come around the corner and we find a big clump of hair, which is eight on it here. And it's starting to get a little bit creepy. Here we have an animal that's 150 pounds that a big cat's coming and killed, and he's dragging it like it's a sack of potatoes through the brush. And we're getting in there, and it's getting thicker and thicker. Now we're finding blood, hair, and bone. I don't think he would hesitate on eating me or Mike, my cameraman. Thank you. 
yourself. What do you think last night? I probably ate it back there. And then probably hyenas and honey badgers started worrying it. It's, it's actually quite rare here for, for you to find a tree or <coughs> a kill up in a tree. And this is exciting for me. I'm here with these interns and they're doing a study on the leopard population and that's part of what's going on over here and I support conservation and when you have too many animals in an area you need to you need to manage that population so if we find a bunch of leopards here it's going to be great news for everything the ecosystem for that leopard and the fact that there's going to be some lucky hunter to come in here and help manage this population so we get our cameras out we set them up and the weight's on we got to sit all night so we come back and see if this leopard's come back to find this kill. So Mike, the intern, can't wait to go check his cameras. He runs out there in the cruiser, pulls the cards, and now it's to see if we've got a leopard on camera. And this thing is huge. It goes up in the tree, grabs its impala, drags it out, and we got it all on trail cam. Yante Conservation Corps, has found their first leopard.